Hi, this is Robert Rapier from R Squared, and welcome to episode two of R Squared TV. As explained in the first episode, we're going to be taking readers' questions every week, sometimes just explaining an issue that's more easily uh, explained by video or audio means, uh, maybe sometimes show a presentation. So this week I have some more readers' questions, and I'll get to those. So the first question, you've called yourself an environmentalist. Can you expound upon that? What causes do you support? This question will come up very frequently when I've written a column like I've just written. Um, and the reason is, any, some environmentalists believe that uh, you know, oil is an evil thing and um, we have to get off oil no matter what. And, and if, I'm, if I'm not campaigning against big oil, I'm in bed with big oil and, and um, I'm, part of the, I'm part of the problem. So I view the problem as a lot more complicated than that. Uh, for, for example, when we hunted whales for oil, you know, a couple of hundred years ago, and oil came along, a lot of people would say, well, that helped save the whales. So there's a case where oil did something uh, positive for the environment. Now, to be clear, I think we should be getting off oil, and I want to see us minimize our oil usage uh, to the greatest extent that we can. But I'm also realized that uh, society today is very dependent upon oil, and there are also risks with trying to come off of oil too quickly. The OPEC embargo in 1973 is an example of what can happen if your oil supplies just get cut off. So what I would like to see is more of a managed uh, reduction in our oil, oil consumption. And in fact, over the last five years in the United States, we have reduced oil consumption by one and a half million barrels a day. Some of that's high prices, some of that is ethanol making a, an impact, um, various reasons that we've reduced our oil consumption. And of course, the, the recession is, uh, is also a big part of it. Um, so I, I, I'm, I'm realistic about uh, the, the, like the oil sands pipeline. That was my most recent essay. And I, I ultimately came down on the side of, I would, uh, I'd build it and uh, hopefully we can get policies in place where we don't actually need it. This is something similar that I've advocated on offshore drilling. I said I would drill and set aside money to making sure that uh, we don't need the oil. So take the money and earmark it for mass transit for uh, efficiency projects for, for alternative energy. So what causes do I support? Kind of getting off the, off the subject a little bit. I, since I was a kid, I guess the um, trash always bothered me, the side of trash. Um, you know, I've, I've said in the first episode, I grew up on a farm, we, would have, we had creeks running through the farm, and when we'd have trash in the creeks, it would drive me crazy. I'd go down and I'd clean up the creeks, and I, I did that, uh, um, you know, multiple times as a kid. As, as I got older, and uh, I would work for various companies, there'd be beach cleanup day, or there'd be uh, uh, the county waste disposal day, and I'd go with my kids and take them down there so they could see what it was like to uh, you know, to chip in and, and try to actually put in time for helping helping the environment. Um, so I and and today, you know, in my personal life, I try to minimize my fossil fuel usage. Um, I uh, I drive very little. Uh, in fact, I, I went uh, almost two years without a car. So uh, I, in my business life, I do have to fly around a little bit, um, a little bit more than maybe I I like to. But, uh, you know, in general, I, for me, an environmentalist is somebody who uh, uh, you know, cares about the environment, wants a clean environment, and that is, that is me. And, and I would say that is not incompatible with sometimes saying, you know, we do need some oil production um, as we power our society down. Because if we didn't have that oil, for, for instance, if you closed off the taps tomorrow, billions of people would die. So the practical reality is, we have to have oil now, but we have to build a society to make sure that we don't need it so much going forward. Uh, second question, do you enjoy debunking myths? I, you know, I've tried to become more sensitive as I've, um, as I've debunked things over the years because I've tried to put myself in the other side's uh, shoes. Maybe they don't know it's a myth, Maybe they're spreading information that they thought to be true, and so I, I try to just, you know, educate and, and put something out there that hopefully, you know, counters some of the misinformation. It is motivating for me, and it always has been motivating for me, to, um, 
to debunk and, and put, put correct misinformation. Um, you know, when I'd get on these chain emails from people that would claim this or that, I, would, I often just respond back to those emails and I try to correct the information. I'll go look at Snopes, uh, which is a debunking site, and I'll say, you know, that email, that particular email is not real and you should not send it on to people. So I guess it's just um, kind of in my DNA that I, I feel like I need to correct information and I want to make sure that when we debate, we're debating on the basis of accurate information. Um, I've got two more questions about politics. Uh, who are good politicians? Who are not good politicians? Um, I'm trying to keep this to five minutes or so, and we're running up on six, so I will save those questions for the next episode. Tune in next week. Thank you.